says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. We draw near to God in full assurance with a heart of faith. Not a heart of unbelief, uncertainty. When we come to God's throne of grace, we know what to expect. There may be delays. This is a difficult season all over the world. But People say to us, historians, because all we listen to now are scientists or a segment of scientists. But historians will tell us, learn from history. So I'm very positive about the future. Because if you look at past pandemics, you see how people became more resilient, more determined. They persevered. They beat the odds. And they rebuilt the economy as we are going to do in Africa, as we are going to do in Pakistan and in India. We are going to build a thriving economy in the name of Jesus. And you as a child of God, you are going to build a great life and you are going to experience God's restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. If you hold on to your hope in the presence of Jesus Christ. So Romans chapter 5, I see my time is running out. I haven't started, so we'll continue tonight. The Bible says, therefore being justified by faith. Now why, why do I read that scripture? Because for your faith to operate, you have to understand your position. Justification simply means just as if I had never sinned. Meaning God who is holy, God who is sinless, God who is spotless, me a frail human being because of what Jesus did can come justified to the throne of grace I can walk up to God that's amazing I have access I can talk to God about anything I can bring my issues to God I can cast my cares I can roll my burdens upon the Lord I am justified not by works not by the law I'm justified by faith. I'm justified by faith. I access the grace of God by faith. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I fight the good fight of faith. I overcome by faith. I hail from God. The greater one lives on the inside of me. That's why the spirit of the world does not intimidate me. Because there's someone greater on the inside and his name is Jesus Christ. Shout amen. Come on. We have a high priest. His name is Jesus. Oh, give him a praise one more time. But give him a praise in your estate. Give him a praise in your block of flats just for a moment. Time out and give him praise. So he says, a little bit of teaching. Having been, past tense, justified, I'm not seeking justification. I have been justified. I'm not seeking righteousness. I have been declared righteous. I'm not seeking acceptance. I have been acceptance. I'm not seeking access. I have been given access freely. It's not a God with a stick. He's not a God that changes. He's not a God that's changed his mind. He's a God who loves you, cares about you. He's your father. Sounds like I said mother. He's your father. You have access. Justified. Says we have peace with God. Meaning we don't come before God with a guilt conscience. We don't come before God with condemnation. We don't come before God reminded of past wrongdoings. And if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, so, so if you sin, which is not God's will for your life, but if you sin, you go to the throne of grace and you say, Father, I messed up. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And God forgives you under the blood immediately. The minute you confess it, you are forgiven. Amen. And that grace gives you the power over sin and changes your desire. That's why you're never going to break the yoke of sin or the bondage of addiction outside of the throne of grace. You have to live in the presence of God. You have to access the grace of God by faith. He says, through whom? This is Jesus 
We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access, there it is again, by faith. Into what? Into the grace of God in which we stand. So where do we stand? We stand in grace. <laughs> this is a dispensation of grace. God's undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor where God is kind to humanity, where God causes His sun to rise on the good and the evil, where God sends rain or, 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 or the sun rises on the just and the unjust. The Bible says the Lord is good to all. So Jesus is the personification of grace. Jesus is grace personified. Grace and truth came with Jesus. He says we have access into the grace of God, the throne room of God by faith in which we stand. So where do we stand? We stand in a place of grace. What do we receive in the place of grace? Help, not judgment. We receive help. We receive hope. We receive assurance. So people preach grace, but then they speak negative about the future. Hey, get a revelation of grace. Grace is not a little pet doctrine. Grace is power. Grace is Jesus. He says, and rejoicing in, in hope of the glory of God. So we access the throne of God by grace and we rejoice in what? Hope. For what? The glory of God. What is hope? We have a favorable expectation. Oh, hallelujah. I said we have a favorable expectation. We expect things to be better. We expect the future to be better. We expect things to change for the glory of God. Come on, South Africa, Africa. Things are going to get better because we have hope. Why do we have hope? Because we have, we have access into the grace of God by faith in what Jesus did for us already. So let me close. It says not only that, we also glory in tribulation. Count it all joy. So this is not a season of mourning. Although we mourn the loss of loved ones, this is a season of rejoicing. We are getting ready for God's deliverance. Come on. We glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. What is he saying? God's making us stronger. We're becoming more determined. We're going to rebuild our lives with a greater passion. We're going to come back to our churches with a greater attitude of worship. We are not going to grow cold in this time. We are not going to backslide in this time. Shout amen in Jesus' name. He says, and perseverance produces character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint. Well, if you have no hope, there's no appointment. Only disappointment. He says hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. What is he saying? There's so much in this. He says, we hope, no matter tribulation, trial, testing, we, be, we persevere more. Our characters become stronger because we stay, stay anchored in the grace of God. And hope does not disappoint because Jesus does not disappoint us. He does not fail us. He's a God of hope and a God of help. He says, because the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart, we're not going to become uncertain in this time because faith works by love. We are rooted in the love of God, grounded in the love of God, that God is my Father. God is not about to abandon planet Earth. 